Ich heiße Wilhelm. Ich spreche kein Deutsch. Ich lerne Deutsch. Ladies and gents, welcome to Vienna. Ferdinand Hanusch. Today we are on the hunt for Empress Sisi. Ah, sehr gut. Franz Josef. Wo ist deine Frau? Wo ist Kaiserin Sisi? This right here is not Empress Sisi. This is Mozart. Look at Mozart. How romantic. Ferenc the first. Franz one, a little bit of a proto-fascist, as you can see from his uh, architectural picadillos. Oh, there she is, the heavy hitter. The heavy hitter, Miss Maria Therese. That's gotta be Maria Therese. You knew it was her, the benevolent ruler. Or so they say. Could have just been good marketing. Could have just been good marketing. But what a statue. Maria Therese. Wo ist die Kaiserin Sisi? This one was built for Ferenc Jozef, aka Frankie Joe. And you can see just from the uh, top there, the cupola dome, the stylistic elements, very late 19th century, very late 19th century. So that was uh, Maria Therese plots. But we are not looking for Maria Therese plots. We are looking for the Kaiserin. And I heard a little rumor that she is over in the uh, Volksgarten. Ferdinand Hanusch. There he is again, Victor Adler. Wow, as a matter of fact, one of my ancestors was named Walter Adler. My great grandfather, Ah, uh, Dady Papa in Hungarian. Don't know the German, but he and his family actually emigrated directly from Vienna to the United States back around 18, 97 in and thereabouts right from Vienna they were Galicians their Kaiser Maximilian the first oh the lonely albino I used to be deathly afraid of pigeons that was like my biggest fear was fucking pigeons a golem book look at these guys they're kind of cute this is how it all starts Pretty soon, I'm raving mad in Central Park with a collection of them. You know, I was thinking before, Budapest and Vienna, if you were to compare them to American cities, I would say that this reminds me already a lot more of New York, whereas Budapest is a little bit more Chicago. Not a perfect analogy by any means, but I'd like over the course of the next several decades to flesh that out a bit. Stop the climate crisis. Yeah, that's gonna be the one that does it. No, Bundespräsident. Wird vom Bundesvolk auf Grund des Gleichen. Grillparzer. Grillparzer was a romantic poet. Perhaps Austria's finest. And you can see some of the romantic themes which he tackled. King Ottokar's Gluck. Und Linde, Medea, Sappho, famous lesbian Sappho, Roman poet. Oh, no, 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 no. How dare I do my girl Sappho dirty like oh, that? East. Sappho was Greek. Die Kaiserin. Think before you speak. Wo ist die Kaiserin, Sisi? Wo ist die Kaiserin? Wo ist die Kaiserin, Sisi? Yes, yes, yes. Ezebeth Kirane. There she is. 1837, Ezer Nyotsas Harman's hate to Ezer Ocht Hundert Ocht Unnonzig. And Sisi was just like me, an aspiring trilinguist. English. German and of course Hungarian for Empress Sisi Erzsébet Királyné Sisi die Kaiserin she loved the Hungarians and she spoke English and Hungarian when trying to keep secrets from her aunt Sophie who also was her mother-in-law because the Habsburgs 
We're the most incestuous dynasty in European history, at least in the more modern era. Who knows what went on back in the day among the Celts. <laughs> Empress Sisi, she was born in 1837 and she grew up in Bavaria with her dad Max and her mother Ludovica and her nine brothers and sisters. Viennese Opera House also inaugurated during the reign of Franz Josef, 1868. That was after things had gotten a bit more stable. Obviously the disastrous defeat to Prussia in 1866. A lot of bloodshed, unrest in the provinces, and that's why they finally had to concede to the Hungarians and give them what they wanted, which was basically autonomy. And largely responsible for that autonomy was Sisi, for she pleaded their cause with a lot of propaganda coming her way to her best friend, Ferenciaida, her tutor, Mishka Falk, a Hungarian Jew who lived in Vienna, and of course the dashing debonair, Count Jula Andrashi, Andrashi Jula, who many think she had an affair with. Although the evidence is inconclusive to say the least, Leonardo Tidian Velasquez Bramante. Whew. It's a real who's who. Gesellschaft der Musikfreunde. And there's the Karl Kirche. Eh? Karl's church. We're looking for the Augustinian church. That's where CC and Franz Josef got married in 1854. After meeting in 1853, let's go take a little look over at the Karl Kirche. Eh? And we can continue the tale. CC growing up on the shores of the Starnberger Sea. And all she ever wanted to do was ride <laughs> horses. So as an 11 year old, 1848, the revolutionary year takes place. Cece's down in Bavaria, not really paying any attention whatsoever to politics. She's just doing 11 year old things. Her older sister, Helena, is being groomed for a suitable match. A suitable match. The Bavarians, they were part of a ducal Bavarian branch, the Wittelsbach branch. Because the Wittelsbachs were also the kings of Bavaria, but Max, he was of the ducal line. That is quite a building. Viennese grandeur, look at those seemingly Byzantine columns. Oh. But while Cece's doing her own thing down in Bavaria, 1848 is probably the most important year of Frankie Joe Habsburg's entire life. Because that's the year he gets the call up to the big leagues. His uncle Ferdinand, the emperor, is falling apart at the seams. He's a feeble-minded dimwit and doesn't really know what he's doing whatsoever. His sister-in-law is Sophie whose own husband, while perhaps not as dim-witted as Ferdinand, was certainly no fit for emperor. Why get rid of one numb nuts and replace him with another? Sophie, they called her the only man in the Habsburg court at that time. In 1848, she makes her play. She has an emperor that she has groomed from the time he was a young lad. Handsome Frankie Joe, Franz Josef, and he becomes emperor in the middle of all of that tumult. Rumeshed Kaiser Hotel. The King of the Romans Hotel. I'm gonna go see if I can use their bathroom. King of the Romans. See, oh, there she is. Can't get away from the gal. How beautiful. How beautiful, Empress Sisi. 1684, that was back when the Austrian uh, monarch was the king of the Romans. Of course, Emperor Franz I, Elshu Ferenc, he stopped all that when he made his empire in the wake of the Napoleonic madness, the Austrian Empire, instead of the Holy Roman Empire. And that was another element that led to the loosening of power 
as the 19th century progressed, culminating, of course, in Franz Josef becoming emperor in 1848, the quelling of the tumult and fervor in Bohemia and the other provinces, and of course the longer, bloodier war against the Hungarians finally quashed with the help of the Russians in 1849. Franz Josef, he's only 18 at the time, and it's really Jofi calling the shots. She decides to go looking for a match, and she looks up in Prussia, gets rebuffed. Another sign that Prussia is moving away from the Austrian locus of German power and consolidating their own center of strength. And finally, after a few more false starts, Sophie settles for the aforementioned Whittles box. But she's not looking at Elizabeth. No, no, no. Cece's not even a thought in mind. They're thinking to match Frankie Joe up with Cece's older sister, Helena. And there you can see some Jolne tile on the top, imported from Peach, a Hungarian flourish. Wow, brilliant, brilliant church. This rivals anything, I think. Helena and Franz Josef are meant to be meeting at the Austrian resort town of Bad Ischl. And Ludovica brings up her girls. Helena, of course, and also 15-year-old Elizabeth in tow. And they're coming from a funeral of a relative. And they're on their way to Bad Ischl. When they arrive, their trunks have been lost or they're late, they're delayed, whatever happens, it ain't good because they're supposed to be meeting Franz Josef and Helena's supposed to look so beautiful, but she's wearing a black funeral dress. As is 15 year old Cece. Unfortunately for Helena, Cece looked great in a black funeral dress, which was good for her, for she ended up sweeping Franz Josef off his feet. 1853, a year that changed history. Now it's rumored that upon hearing the news that Franz Josef wanted to marry her, Cece confided in a friend, if only he were but a tailor. She was never made to be the empress and yet the empress she would soon become. And after being married in 1854, that truly shut the door. Because there is no going back once you tie the knots in an ultra-devout clerical Catholic regime, such as the neo-absolutist Habsburgs were. Very dope. Acht Schulerstrasse. Mozart lived here. <laughs> Mozart. You're just rolling down the street in Vienna and you come across Mozart's house. Okay, we emerge. Oh, nice little library here. Cool. Just a. My job, Vaj? My job. Yeah. Real much for joke. The Igazabo America, the Fenish again, my job. Yeah, Tanolok, my job. I get shaken tekra. Never should have been there. You can take me out of Hungary, but you can't take Hungary out of me, just like Sisi. Erzsébet Elizabeth Sisi, my 19th century muse. Of course, her tale has just begun, but for now, our song is sung. If you would like to sponsor more of these beautiful characters, such as Frankie, Joe, and Cece, please head over to my Patreon page. Said good. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you very soon.